in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed this mysteries the mysteries that control the understanding and the administration of spiritual power now respectfully speaking there are so many people who talk about power people have written books about power but it's very clear that there are very few people very few people who genuinely understand power alongside the systems of administering it i'm hoping that this teaching tonight will truly bless you hallelujah praise the name of the lord let me set two foundations very very quickly hallelujah two foundations very very quickly number one please write the first foundation that i want you to get tonight is that god is the all-powerful god this looks very simple, but please write. God is the all-powerful God. We're in the school of power tonight. God is the all-powerful God. Not one of them, not the most senior. God is the all-powerful God. He's called El Shaddai, the multi-breasted one. It's a picture of one who has infinite ability and supplies. Are we together? Jeremiah 32 and verse 17. So the first foundation tonight is that God is the all-powerful God. It says, Our Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power. Please say, by thy great power. It took great power to make the heavens and the earth. It was not just suggestion. It was beyond sincerity. If he was God indeed, he had to prove it by exerting great power to make the heavens and the earth. It says, and thy outstretched arm, and there is nothing on account of your track record. We know for a shorty that there is nothing too hard for thee. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Second scripture to buttress on this point is Psalm 62 and verse 11. Popular scripture here. Psalm 62 and 11. God had spoken once. Twice have I heard this, that power belonged unto God. Someone say, power belongs to God. Power. One more time. Say, power belongs to God. So every time you see the manifestation of power across this realm, across the earth, it tells you that there is a God factor that has been introduced within that system. Even if manipulated, the Bible testifies that power resides with God. That everywhere you see the manifestation of power, no matter what name you call it, that that power came from God, whether it was manipulated, as you'll be learning tonight, all power belongs to God. God does not depend on any deity to get power. If he did, he would no longer be God. Are we together? One of, there are three attributes for your knowledge. There are three attributes of God that he did not share with man. Please look up. The Bible tells us that we were made in the image and the likeness of God. What does that mean? The image of God is a spiritual, the spiritual quality. The image of God made in Christ. Are we together? The glory of God but the likeness of God means his functionality we were made to function like God two hands one head are we together now yes and we function by speaking we function by doing so the Bible says man was made in the image of God and in the likeness of God this is very important God gave man everything the Bible lets us know that we are partakers of his divine nature do you believe that however 
there are three attributes of God he did not share with man. Listen carefully. There are three attributes of God that he did not share with man. These are the attributes that brand God and put him in a class all by himself. For your knowledge, just write it down quickly. Number one is called his omnipotence or omnipresence. Let's start with omnipresence. Omnipresence. What does that mean? His ability to be everywhere at the same time. The Bible calls him Alpha. It calls him Omega. The expression and was not in the original translation. Alpha, Omega. What does that mean? It means that God does not need to move forward to know what the end will be. Are we together? There is no time lag with him. He's at the beginning and at the same time he's at the end. This is an attribute of God he did not share with man. The psalmist said it this way, where can I hide from your presence? Omnipresence. God is everywhere at the same time. None of us, no matter how, even if we contend, we get into that Philip dimension, we cannot be everywhere at the same time. Even Jesus, when he wore a mortal body and became flesh, he could not be everywhere at the same time. Jesus would say, let us go to the other side. That means let's leave where we are now and then move to the other side when he was going to Gadara. But God can be everywhere at the same time. It's interesting that he's here in this place and he's there with someone in a church somewhere, in a crusade ground somewhere, and it's the same God. Number two, his omnipresence or omnipotence. Omnipotence. That is the second attribute of God. What does it mean? Potent means powerful, all-powerful. God does not outsource power from the external environment. God does not outsource power. I hope you know that every other being, every other entity on earth, listen, the law of power also goes hand in glove with the law of authority. That means anybody you see manifesting power must be able to show where he received it from because the only person who does not receive power is God. Are we together now? But every other being, ye shall receive power. Are we together now? This is very important. When it comes to God, he did not outsource his power. If he outsourced his power, then whoever or whatever gave him that power must then be the God. Omnipotent. Number three is omniscient. Omniscient. Others will say omniscience. Omniscient. That means all-knowing. These are the three attributes of God he did not share with man. Omniscient. God knows all things. God is not learning. He does not learn. When Jesus came and walked in the flesh, he had to learn the law. But God in his capacity as God does not learn. God does not have anybody who teaches him or grants him mentorship. He knows all things. Are we together? We have to depend on the Holy Spirit for our knowledge. But God is all-knowing. 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 We see in part... The Bible says, and we prophesy in part. But we're talking about the God that knows everything. If he is everywhere, then it makes sense for him to know everything. Are we together? Praise the name of the Lord. All right, so back to our foundation. We're laying a very strong foundation that God is the all-powerful God. This is very important. Find a way of believing that in truth, whether you have seen his power manifest to the degree that satisfies you or not, believe by faith that God is all-powerful. Number two, the second foundation that I want to lay tonight in our discussion is that God desires for his power to be revealed in the lives of his people. God desires for his power to be revealed in the lives of his people. He's not only the all-powerful God, but there is a yearning in his heart 
that his power be made manifest in the midst of his people. Psalm 107 verse 21. Psalm 107 verse 21. Here's what it says. Oh, that men would praise the Lord, it says, for his goodness and for his wonderful works. Where? To the children of men. Men will praise him because they have seen in experience his goodness and his wonderful works. In Zephaniah 3, 17, Zephaniah 3 and verse 17, it says, the Lord thy God in the midst of thee is mighty. Not just the Lord seated on a throne, are we together? The Lord who has come to be made manifest is mighty. He will save, he will rejoice over thee with joy. He, he will rest in his love, he will joy over thee with singing. The Lord in the midst of thee is mighty. Hallelujah. So these two foundations are very important for our discussion tonight. That God is the all-powerful God. But then that number two, God desires his power to be revealed in my life and your life. If you can settle on that, then you'll be ready to learn everything as far as the dynamics of power is concerned. If you still have a restraint in your thinking, whether or not God wants his power to be made manifest, chances are excellent that you will not be open to receive. Are we together? What is power? Let me define for you the power of God. In fact, power generally. Please write. I have two definitions here or three that I want you to please put down. Number one, power is the ability slash capacity to do or to influence outcomes. Power is the ability slash capacity to do or to influence outcomes. The ability to influence outcomes is called power. The ability to do, the ability to influence outcomes, all kinds of outcomes, human outcomes, circumstantial outcomes, spiritual outcomes, financial outcomes, the ability to do and the ability to influence outcomes is called power. Do you understand that definition? That means if someone comes here now who say for instance is sick and I can exert an energy, an influence upon that person and that person instantly becomes healed. There was an agency, am I right on that? That functioned like a drug into that person's body that corrected that anomaly we call that power everywhere you see outcomes influenced to line up with the will of god and to line up in such a way that it it makes the saints to be victorious that there right there is the manifestation of the power of god what turns a man from poverty to wealth is power. What turns a man from defeat to an excelling life is power. What subdues principalities, witches and wizards and causes an individual regardless your background to emerge is power. One more time, power is defined as the ability or capacity to do the ability to influence outcomes. Number two, I define power as the force that compels compliance. Power is the force that compels compliance. Very powerful definition. The force that compels compliance. You can put in bracket obedience. The force that compels compliance. The capacity to influence outcomes and the force that compels compliance. That means everywhere power is available, you know the presence of power by the manifestation of obedience. Are we together? Everywhere there is power, there must be obedience to the will and the dictates of the person manifesting the power. When you see lawlessness 
and you see disobedience is a sign that power is not present or that power is not being executed accurately. Am I right on that? Yes, sir. Write this down, please. Every result, and listen carefully, every result in life and in the kingdom is attributed to power. Every result, prosperity, increase, great children, a great marital destiny, great ministry, abundance, increase spiritually. Every result in life and in the kingdom is attributed to power. Every result. When you see results in the kingdom, in any variety of its expressions, I am telling you that at the back of every result is the manifestation of power. Now, whether that power is positively used or not is something else we are going to discuss. Watch this. That also includes a herbalist who will tell someone, come, I want to prosper you. Go and bring a goat. Go and bring a chicken. And it does some incantations and mixes all of those things and tells the person, go. And by the time he gets to the office, they promote him twice in one month. And you are wondering, that there is power being manifested. Whether it glorifies God or not is something else we're going to discuss. But we're settling the fact that every time you see the ability to manipulate outcomes to your advantage, it is called power. I hope you know that the hallmark of dominion is not knowledge. The hallmark of dominion is power. What you know is useless if it cannot manipulate the outcomes of your destiny. Please listen carefully. The hallmark of dominion is not knowledge. The hallmark of dominion is power. If you are walking in dominion in truth, it must be demonstrated by your ability to select the possibilities that come into your life or the possibilities that remain in your life. If you do not have that ability to edit the happenings in your life and only allow those that are consistent with the will of God to find expression, what is missing in your life is power. Is someone learning already? The ability to compel compliance. I said every result in life and in the kingdom is attributed to power. No wonder we look at people and we say this man is powerful. When you see a wealthy man who is excelling, you say, wow, this man is so powerful. Whenever you see men and women manifest um, extra supernatural or extra human abilities accomplish certain feats we usually will attribute them more to power than even it is to knowledge hallelujah i don't know how i stumbled across a video one time online where i think it's they slap themselves that's the the, the and it, it caught my attention and i said what in the world is going on here I mean, literally a competition with people who come and then this guy will slap this guy. If you are able to stand that slap, then you, now your turn, they slap you back. I, I, I don't, of course, everybody has a right to whatever it is that they believe, but I found that amusing. And then one of the guys who was purported to be a world champion, it was now his turn to slap the other guy. And with the determination of a winner, he slapped that gentleman and I think the person passed out or, or collapsed. And I said, that right there is power. <laughs> to manipulate an outcome to reflect your desire. Are we together? Yes. Many believers are stranded in life and destiny because they do not understand the dynamics of power. They do not understand how to access it. They, did not, they do not even understand how it works, nor how to release and to dispense it. And listen to me, your Christian experience will be in a sorry state if you do not understand the dynamics of power and how to make it manifest. 
Respectfully speaking, there are preachers struggling in ministry because they do not understand how the power of God works. There are individuals struggling across several areas of their lives because they do not know that the power of God is the privilege of all the saints. Look at me, please. When we talk of power, especially in the kingdom, I think subliminally we have been programmed to imagine that the power of God is the exclusive reserve for preachers, apostles and prophets so when we say power immediately your mind goes to an apostle some prophet some evangelist some teacher and then once you do not feel called into the fivefold ministry we usually close our hearts to power and would gladly have to depend on the vessels we perceive to have power for us to partake of that power but i am telling you that when it has to do with the power of god he desires that all men Power is in several degrees. Power is in several dimensions. We are not necessarily discussing that tonight. Are we together now? But just for you to know that once you are in Christ, it is your heritage and your privilege as, as a result of that which Christ has done to access, to walk in, and to manifest in experience the power of God. You believe that? Say amen. amen. Psalm 66 and verse 3 it says say unto God how terrible art thou in thy works it says through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves unto you submission is a product of power when it has to do with elemental forces when it has to do with the realm of the spirit many people have heard the saying that the only language Satan understands is power I believe that it takes the power of God to subdue principalities and powers it takes the power of God to manipulate circumstances and situations to reflect glory to reflect grace this is our mandate to bring everything to the obedience of Christ in experience hallelujah did the Bible not say it in um, that should be Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10 to the intent it says that now unto principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God chapter 2 and verse 10 says we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works which God had before ordained that we should work in them and all of this will require power more than desire you will require power please listen to me my brother my sister it will take power to rewrite the narratives the negative narratives in your family it will take power to force your portion to come to you and to remain with you the bible says strong men return retain wealth wise men bring wealth but strong men retain wealth are we together now it takes power to compel your portion right from the days of John up until now the kingdom suffered violence it says the violence shall take it by force there is nothing that God desires to come into your life that will just come in cheaply Satan will not allow that he is a master at rebellion he is a stubborn spirit stubborn from the foundations of the earth and he will not allow anything including your portion to come to you without a contest not even salvation came at a platter of gold to us the recipients we got it freely but to him who paid that price he paid the price with his blood his reputation even his death if your life is going to change it will take power man of God if you must rise in ministry and excel it is going to take power it takes power to stop the devil from destroying your children and planting all kinds of negative and demonic seeds in them it takes power it takes power to ward off the antagonisms of men that plague our world and still continue to excel in spite of Satan in spite of negative situations and circumstances someone say power let the devil hear you power now pay attention 
very briefly let me just share this is not there is something I want us to touch tonight before we pray but the power of God listen carefully the power of God operates exclusively by faith the power of God at work in the believer operates exclusively by faith that means power is faith dependent now for a long time um, I think across the body of Christ there seems to have been an age-long confusion as to the role of the power of God versus the role of faith and so erroneously we've had people who are supposedly the power people especially the charismatics we are the people of power the people of the spirit and they downplay the place of faith and then respectfully speaking we have those who believe in faith as it were and do not seem to place any regard to the ministry of the holy spirit there is nowhere in the bible where believers are taught to dichotomize faith and then the ministry of the holy spirit or to choose one against the other it is an unfortunate miscommunication of women and women of God. And I know that everybody is doing their best, but speaking from a standpoint of scriptural accuracy, listen, faith and the power of God work hand in glove. The assignment of faith is to connect you to the power of God. Are we together? When you say faith has brought you the victory, you are right. But the dynamics of that operation is that your faith connects you to the power of God it is the power of God that is the force that actually produces the results are we together yeah imagine with me for a moment that you bought a nice gadget say a fridge please look up walk with your minds now so we have here a fridge are we together beautiful fridge that you bought from whatever you know where appliances are bought and you have this fridge it has the potential to cool anything your soft drinks whatever you put in there but did you know that there is usually a socket on your wall am i am i am i right on that that is connected to the power holding company now that fridge can remain there for eternity even though brand new you will never be able to experience the potential i hope you know that if you just put your tomato or your drinks there is going to rot and spoil there does that mean the fridge cannot cool it can but now it's not connected to power does that even mean that the power holding company has not released power there's power but your connection are we together and sometimes how many of you know that the wire from your fridge to the wall may be too short sometimes am I right on that and you may need to add to the wire to elongate it your assignment is that by all means it gets to connect there that long wire you see is what we call fate the assignment of faith is to be a conduit for the power of God to flow so when you say the wire is the reason why the fridge is on you are not wrong but classically speaking there is power that flows through that wire am I right on that electricity you call it that is what really powers it so as much as the power is available to power your fridge if the wire that is connected is too small you will need to elongate it this is the dynamics of faith and the power of God so imagine someone who says I don't need the power in the wall there all I need is to have a long wire you can go and buy you know measure wires and buy it and even hang some on your shoulder now there's no doubt that you have a lot of wire but will the fridge still be cold then assume the person who keeps jumping and using a tester to say look i can guarantee you there is light there the power holding company has released light will the fridge still be on there has to be a synergy am i right on that a combination between the socket and the power that is released there and then your wire that connects you so faith connects you to the power of God but it is the power of God that actually brings the results are you learning now so if all you have is power congratulations but you are about to watch from a distance and be frustrated while you watch because it will take faith to transport that reality so when the Bible says things like this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith 
He's talking about your conviction that now has given you room to take action and in taking your action, you have now committed the power of God to flow. Hallelujah. But it's important for you to know that the administration of the power of God is faith dependent. What does that mean? That means that administering the power of God is a product of conviction and obedience. You're not going to independently or arbitrarily manifest genuine power. All kinds of power, even manipulated power, depends on conviction and obedience. If you go and for instance, not, not to praise or glorify the devil, but just because of our discussion. Imagine with me that you were not saved. Back in our days, traditional practices, and you now went to some herbalist somewhere and said, Sir, I want my crops to produce maximally this year. Watch what you will do. He will say, so, so this is what you want? Yes, sir. I want to have a bumper harvest. He will laugh because that possibility exists in the spirit. Are we together? And then based on his experience or his level of consecration or his ability to access familiar spirit he will come up with a formula that controls what you are looking for am i am i am i right on that when he consults with those mediums they will now tell him what must be combined to produce that outcome you're looking for so he will now give you the list go and bring a black goat for instance go and bring one bag of beans or whatever it is go and bring this and that add fifty thousand naira to it and then write the names of everybody who will be farming there and now you may not know what you are doing remember all you want is the outcome but number one your conviction number two your obedience you will now go and get all those things and bring it and say i've now brought it and he will conjure those things and say a lot of nonsense and gibberish that you don't care about while he's saying and once he will mix all of that thing he may give you something or he may say go and to your shock and wonder you will be surprised that your farm will start obeying you in a certain way hmm. am i right on that yes bumper harvest and people will ask you, how did you do it? Usually will not, you will not tell them where they were. You will just say, it's just God's grace. But you and the herbalist and even God, you know that a transaction happened. Now listen carefully. Your eyes will be open to something I will teach you now. That is corrupted power, manipulated power. God is not glorified through the process because it is minus. It does not reveal and glorify Jesus. However, that process you see, is a manipulation of spiritual laws. It is not an invention of Satan. Familiar spirits demand fraternity to reveal certain secrets to men by reason of their advantage being spirits. You are going to be learning. Blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind. Spirit of victory, cover us with your wings. Will you blow, blow, blow like a mighty wind? Spirit of victory, cover us with your feet. I do not know any herbalist, any spiritist, or anybody, at least we see from Nigerian film that you come and meet and say Baba or whoever because they are both male and female, whether Baba or Mama, whichever one, I need help. Look up, please. Who will just tell you, you need help? Go, it is done. Even if it's your biological father, he will demand action. There is something you must do. And based on the gravity of what you want to be done, that is the level of demand. There are sometimes they may say, are you ready to give your wife? Ah, my wife. But I'm desperate for this position. Say, well, we have consulted with the realm of the spirit and we have found out that this is the condition connected to this. And there are people, sadly, who would do it. That even includes your soul. The Bible is clear as to the fact that there is a place on earth where men can do business even with their soul and gain the world as a result. And the Bible, he knows that it will work. You gain the whole world by losing your soul. And the result will work. You are gaining the whole world, but will not see your soul that has been lost, unfortunately. 
Everywhere the power of God is dispensed, there must be a demand for obedience. Look at the ministry of Jesus. Everywhere you see Jesus manifesting power, especially in the midst of men, there will always be an action. There will always be, he would ask them a question, do you believe I'm able to do this? If you believe, stand up, pick up your bed and walk. Or what should I do for you? You would think that as powerful and compassionate as he was and he is, he shouldn't even ask them any question. But there was always a demand because the power of God is faith dependent. Please listen carefully. The power of God is faith dependent. The power that lifts you is faith dependent. The power that attracts possibilities to your life is faith dependent. The power that will raise your children to become excellent people is faith dependent. The power that will grow that church to bring glory to God is faith dependent. And if you do not understand faith, then you cannot understand the power of God. Is someone learning? Now, I want to teach you three levels. There are three levels at which the power of God is accessed and released. Three levels. The power of God is accessed at three levels. And all those levels have the dimensions of possibilities that they bring. I want you to please lend me your attention now. We're in the school of power. Is someone learning? Three levels. Number one, write this down and please do not forget it. The first level is the power that has been programmed into laws and principles. Please write. There is a dimension of the power of God that has been programmed into laws, L-A-W-S, and principles. The first dimension of the power of God that all men, even the saints, can access is the power of God that has been programmed into laws and principles. An instance is in Genesis chapter 8 and verse 22. God made a very profound pronouncement there and he connected it to the earth. Look up please. It says, while the earth remaineth. Is that in your Bible? It says, seed time and harvest. Everybody say laws. Cold and heat. Summer and winter. Day and night shall not cease. Have you seen any one of these seas on earth? Sometimes... The seasons will be so prolonged, you would think the other one will not come. But a dimension of God's power was invested into laws and principles. And look at me. The nature of this dimension of power is that it functions based on understanding, not relationship. You do not need a relationship with God to access this dimension of his power. That is the reason why an individual can reject God as God, but walk in keeping through understanding to these laws and access that dimension of power. This is a dimension of power that unbelievers have used to build conglomerates. Unbelievers have used the law of value has the power of God attached to it. The law of relationships has the power of God attached to it. It says he that wants friends must show himself friendly. Whether that person is a believer or not, the moment you are friendly, you, that dimension of God's power is kicked into your favor. Watch this. If a terrorist decides to maximize the rainy season to farm, will it bring crops for him? I hope you know that earth that produced for him is the Lord's and his fullness thereof. And yet that man, as evil-hearted as he is or they are, will still farm because the power of God has been invested into the law of seed time and harvest, they will still have a bumper harvest. Please listen carefully, believers. Apostle, I desire power in my life. I want to have an encounter with the Holy Spirit. I don't know why I'm not seeing the power of God. 
you may have neglected this dimension of the power of God. Why are unbelievers striving and excelling? They don't love Jesus, yet we see them excel because they have mastered this dimension of accessing the power of God. They may not acknowledge Jesus as Lord and Savior. In fact, they may deny him to his face, but that does not mean the laws will stop working. If you understand me, say amen. amen. Let me, just, you, you don't need to write, just look at me. Let me list for you a few laws that have the power of God behind them. Are you ready? You can just listen. Number one is the law of diligence. The Bible says the diligent hand shall be made rich. No matter who on earth, the moment you subscribe to diligence, there is a great future for you under normal circumstances. If you are diligent and you do not prosper, it takes demons to interrupt that law. But under normal circumstances, diligence should and productivity is connected to wealth and increase. Number two, blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. That every time you show mercy, you are programming that reality. Whether you are born again or not, based on the laws of seasons and the laws of time and chance, eventually that harvest will come to you. I would want you to do something for us. If you are new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button for us. And then like this video as well. Share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body, to their soul, and to their spirit. We would need you to do one thing for us too. Tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from. And if you've got any testimony for us, kindly share with us. Thank you for watching.